Welcome to the first of two video lectures for the gear module of Gaming Homer, and we're going to start out by looking at gear as it appears in the Iliad in two places. The first is in Book 16, where Patroclus gets ready to go and have his famous Aristea, at the end of which he dies, um, and precipitates the end of the Iliad because, of course, Achilles gets so enraged that he gives up his wrath at Agamemnon and decides to take it all out on Hector. And then the greatest gear moment of all, which is the shield of Achilles, where gear becomes a kind of thematic study of the entire epic. Um, and that's going to be in book uh, 18. Okay, so here's what we have in book 16. Patroclus is getting ready, and the idea in this lecture is that we're going to be talking about what gear means uh, in the epic tradition through talking about what gear means in video games, especially the MMORPG, where gear is taken to a kind of high art, and then reflect back from there uh, on what gear means in uh, WoW and Lotro and the other MMORPGs and in other games, including a game like Halo, where gear is important in its own way, see if we can figure out what that means to our culture from what it meant within the structure of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Okay, so here's Patroclus' famous arming scene. He spoke, and Patroclus was helming himself in bronze that glittered, page 333, if you've got the line more translation. First he placed along his legs the beautiful greaves, linked with silver fastenings to hold the greaves at the ankles. Afterwards he girt on about his chest the corslet, starry and elaborate of swift-footed Iachides, that's Achilles, Across his shoulders he slung the sword with the nails of silver, a bronze sword, and above it the great shield, huge and heavy. Over his mighty head he set the well-fashioned helmet with the horsehair crest, and the plumes nodded terribly above it. He took up two powerful spears that fitted his hand's grip, only he did not take the spear of blameless Iachides, huge, heavy, thick which no one else of all the Achaeans could handle, but Achilles alone knew how to wield it. The Pelian spear, which Charon had brought to his father from high on Peleon to be death for fighters. Okay, so Patroclus is getting dressed. There are two kind of dominant elements here. One is the appearance of the gear, the plumes nodding terribly, and the second is the function of the gear, the death-dealingness of it. And within that, there's one crucial point which I think is incredibly interesting from the standpoint of the comparison that we're making here, that Patroclus does not take the spear of Achilles because he can't use it. Now, what we're going to find in MMORPGs is that there is certain gear that you are not allowed to use when you are too low level. And so we have that same kind of differentiation in its own way as a kind of fundamental gesture of the storytelling. Achilles is a better hero, even though Patroclus is still really good and his gear shows it. Now we get to the greatest gear moment of all, the shield of Achilles. And what seems clear is that a bard realized that the importance of gear in his tradition, the Iliadic epic tradition, gave him an opportunity to do something really cool with the narrative. And the thing that was really cool is to incorporate what's called an ekphrasis, uh, literally a declaration away from, something that doesn't really have to do with the on-flowing of the story, into an, uh, a scene of the forging of armor, which is in turn based on a scene of arming. And what we get is this incredibly extended, incredibly wonderful description of what's going on on the shield of Achilles, which is at root uh, itself a kind of um, encapsulation of what it means to tell a story about a shield like this. And the basic um, dynamic is clearly that the bard is able to tell the description of this shield, which is so far beyond any shield that actual human technology could ever produce. That is, in terms of artistic refinement, the bardic occasion is much the best of any occasion because nothing else could describe a wonderful shield like this. But all of that, and this is the important point for our purposes, comes out of the dynamic of gear. So here's how it goes when Hephaestus starts to forge the new armor of Achilles. So he spoke and left her there and went to his bellows, page 387 of the Lattimore. He turned these toward the fire and gave them their orders for working. 
and the bellows, all twenty of them, blew on the crucibles from all directions, blasting forth wind to blow the flames high. Now as he hurried to be at this place, and now at another, wherever Hephaestus might wish them to blow, and the work went forward. He cast on the fire bronze, which is weariless, and tin with it, and valuable gold and silver, and thereafter set forth upon its standard the great anvil, and gripped in one hand the ponderous hammer, while in the other he grasped the pincers. First of all he forged a shield that was huge and heavy, elaborating it about, and threw around it a shining triple rim that glittered, and the shield strap was cast of silver. There were five folds composing the shield itself, and upon it he elaborated many things in his skill and craftsmanship. Okay, I'm going to stop there, because in the Iliad as we have it, we get a big description of everything that's on the shield, the kind of true virtuosic exorcist. But if you go about two pages further on and go to the very end of the description, you can see that what happens after the shield gets elaborated in the Iliad as we have it is that we continue on with the making of the armor, which would have been originally the way it would have been without that big virtuosic exorcist, like so on page 391. Then after he had wrought this shield, which was huge and heavy, he wrought for him a corslet, brighter than fire in its shining, and wrought him a helmet, massive and fitting close to his temples, lovely and intricate work, and laid a gold top ridge along it, and out of pliable tin wrought him leg armor. Thereafter, when the renowned smith of the strong arms had finished the armor, he lifted it and laid it before the mother of Achilles. Okay. So, if you play MMORPGs, you'll know what I mean when I say best crafted set ever. Okay, in any case, what we have here is what was originally a wonderful description, which was already itself a kind of mise en abime, of making some really good armor. But then, a bard had the bright idea of sticking what we know as the shield of Achilles into it, which begins this way on page 388. He made the earth upon it and the sky, and the sea's water, and the tireless sun, and the moon waxing into her fullness, and on it all the constellations that festoon the heavens, blah, 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 blah. Okay, the way I think about this is that this is the first part of the Shield of Achilles, which was the first bard who worked on its inspiration. But then somebody else got the bright idea of just sticking more and more cool stuff into it, until finally we get descriptions of cities of people one of which includes this at the bottom of 388. The people were assembled in the marketplace where a quarrel had arisen and two men were disputing over the blood price for a man who had been killed. One man promised full restitution in a public statement, but the other refused and would accept nothing. Both then made for an arbitrator to have a decision, and people were speaking up on either side to help both men. And it goes on like this. And what this is, is clearly a different version of the story of the Iliad, a version in peacetime, a version in this city of peace where it's possible to have judges who can figure things out, and you don't have the incredible destruction that you get over the course of the Iliad, everybody dying because Achilles is mad, because Agamemnon took away his girl. And so what you have on the shield is a way of reflecting on the themes of the epic itself. Okay, can gear do that in uh, an MMORPG or in any other game? Well, no, I don't think so. But there are ways that gear is kind of moving outward from its center of just being a kind of mathematical construct, construct that changes your statistics in the game towards being something more. And when we look at the comparison with Lord of the Rings Online, I'm going to try to show you how that is. It's not to the level of the Shield of Achilles yet. It may never get there. I don't think it's quite as flexible in its being, um, and I don't think it could ever be quite as flexible in its being as what we see in something like the Shield of Achilles. But the fact that it is kind of pushing the boundaries and that it has become uh, such a prevalent and interesting thing for people to talk about in relation to games um, is something that I think is well worth discussing in this course.